Okay. I'm going live here on the dork table on the RLM and I'm going to do another solo. This is Flash Somebody. That was the original name I came up with, but it's managed to get kind of changed over the years because of circumstances with me typing things into a computer. I'm not still not good at that yet, but we're stalling you now so I can type in the date and make Grim a happy camper because Grimner is the uh, the brains behind this whole shenanigans and it's all his idea. <laughs> I'm just I'm just doing shit. I'm just pushing buttons and saying crap that I think. And that's about the extent of it. Uh I'm should I I guess I'm going to put the door another No, this is the dork table, so I just do it like that. I think I updated that. Wait. There we go. So where do we begin? As usual, I say hello to the RLM and Boy, this is really weird without Vinny showing up. He he dumped me. Poor guy. He's probably found somebody to sleep with. <laughs> doesn't want to doesn't want to go to work. <laughs> anyway, we got the RL and, and uh, thanks Grim. He carries the he carries the dork table and puts it up on Spreaker and uh, I guess we're we're on uh, YouTube and we're here on the on the reallibertymedia.com. That's where the chat room's at, so if you haven't heard this crazy shit before and you're hearing it for the first time, <laughs> go to reallibertymedia.com and check out the, the crew at the RLM. They are everything and then some. And we're going to say hi to these yo-yos. I don't mean yo-yos. I mean crazy fuckers. We got uh, Barman, <coughs> Grimner, Moose Girl, Miss Kate, we've got Phantom, Anti, uh, Anti underscore, he's double dipping today. Asmo, Beth Z, Chloe Singular, Chelsea, uh, with Chelsea Denis with no O. Oh, wait a minute, that came up between Chloe, so we got a Chloe Chloe, we got Chloe's double, Colfax 101, and Cyborg Noodle. Hi, <laughs> Pox, that was great. Uh, Don D underscore C, uh, Dakota, Echelon, I don't recognize. There's a new name for me to play with. Uh, Frumped and Frumpy. Frumpy forgot to log off as Frumped, and he's double dipping too. And we got, hey, Miss Mary's here. We got, well, probably not here, just logged on. We got Graham Z, Ibi Don C, Java Doctor 2, AJ Dread. J's, Nines, J's, Wana Taco, <laughs> Kozu, mm -hmm. Poxbot, Poxfied, Poxphone, Pox at Home, Pawn Sauce, Rain, uh, the fluke is here today. Mm. Perhaps I will hang around and speak with her. Uh, and we got Rob Works, the Bubbler, Sock Puppet, Skittle, Hannah wanted to say hi real quick. And uh, ending it out here is trust no one. I call him trust number one, but mm, I do everything I'm not supposed to do at least once just to see if I shouldn't do it, I go, I suppose. Anyway, it's really good. Everything's getting legal and, you know, we're all being straightened out. <laughs> well, how would, can you imagine what savages we would be living without organized society with their uniforms and their shiny badges and their guns to protect us from each other hmm wonder what that would be like what would you do if you had to no police and you just had to defend yourself against all of them <laughs> i i haven't met too many people that live in a, a big city that that idea appeals to but i think it's good in the smaller places get rid of the damn cops but then you got that lack of revenue. It doesn't generate, you know, crime because having police influence, uh, what do you call it, Inf participation, you know, where you have armed, guarded, buckled, shiny people looking for trouble, and they find it. They, they make stuff up to arrest you for, and what can you do? They got the handcuffs and the guns because you kind of go along with it. It's... 
it's like a um like a game of charades but your life is at stake it's not really a joke but it's it's funny when it's all over with but when you're going through it it's like jesus christ are these people this desperate to make money that they make shit up as they go along and i'll give you an example i've told this story on the dork table before but i was once arrested for having an uh a concealed weapon, that's what they called it. And I was on a three-wheel Volkswagen, so what happened was my, it was my father's Volkswagen, and he let me use it for a while. But he would he had been working on it that day, and I went and got it, and I was driving around that night. And he shoved the bar underneath the body so that if anything were wrong with the bike, he could just come fix it and prop, the bo uh, prop up the body of it. Well, somehow or another, I managed to get pulled over by the police. For They never wrote me a ticket for anything. They just arrested me for the bar. <laughs> so, it was, looking back on it now, is well, you pulled me over for this, but now you've got that. So, even back then in, in the early 80s, I was well on my way to seeing how how fantastic and and how much of what was going on was just made up bullshit on the spur of the moment to do what they wanted to do. And it was, they weren't saving anybody. I was riding home, minding my business. You know, I had no plans to visit anybody with that stupid bar, but because they got the guns and the flashy lights, they get to tell people I did, you know, it's their, their word against mine. I don't really think life's changed all that much since, since those days but as uh, as i've gotten older i'm of way of less interest to the uh the status quo <laughs> what do you call these people that run around believing that they're in in authority because of ideas that the collective believes you know it, it's hard to explain to somebody that believes it because that's where they've been taken and it's just as hard to make me not believe it because of the way i've seen it and doesn't seem to be a middle ground with this one you you pick a side on the on the cop thing you're either firm or you get them and as our good friends like grimner and rob works would say fuck the police and i understand it i mean i'm i'm one of the people that has rarely if ever seen an act done by a cop that wasn't uh, an aggression or something violent towards somebody they they're not helpful people i'll give you an example when we were teenagers me and my brother and a friend or two would would go from la to orange county to go entertain ourselves on a friday night and on the way back it was about a 30 25 30 mile drive give or take and on the way back one night as we made our bend to catch the freeway we were going to catch somebody had overturned their car and they were laying on on you know upside down on the road and there was nobody there so we pulled over and we stopped and and the, just as we were getting there then the cops show up and the first thing they do is tell us to get the fuck out of there and go away oh <laughs> they don't want us near that site well that was just about the time, that was the early, I guess the early 70s, 75, 76, right in there, where they were just gearing up to force everybody to purchase car insurance. They hadn't quite got to that. That step hadn't been taken, but all the all the legal bullshit was all in the works. And they were setting the cops up earlier than, than the public to keep them away and, and out of stuff. They don't want us interacting with them. They're, you know, they're, they're cops. <laughs> if they're interacting with you, you better have handcuffs on or a ticket in your pocket, you know, or a, an an upset grandmother. At least, you know, piss somebody off. That's what the police have become over the last forty years. And luckily for me, <laughs> uh, I uh, I went on a vacation and, and never went back. And with any luck, there won't be anything, you know, in any return to to the states. But I spent a lot of years t in America. I've still got a lot of family that lives there. Um, 
I'm not sure what states. I know California has got a ton of my family in it. And Tennessee, because that's where I was. But I've got cousins, and cousins have children that I've never met in my life. And in the last um, seven years, I haven't even been to America. But then my grandmother, eh, this is kind of weird. My grandmother on my mom's side, the story goes that she went to England to escape Russia. So maybe someday I'll do one of those. Like that test Mary had um, put a link up about where you, you test your DNA to see what your roots truly are. And it comes back and it tells you, you know, the truth about your heritage, not what the government says about your heritage. And in, in the video, it would show people that were so mistaken with who they truly were according to the country that they were born in, that when the you know, the truth was presented to them, they were deeply shocked. <laughs> and, and it's things like that that just make me have this opinion about the uh, the governments and, and the systems and all this, because it's all basically second-rate shit and garbage that we... We don't really have an alternative around unless you want to live outside of the system. And they made that pretty difficult back home now. And like Vinny proved to us, you know, if you have a lot of land and you're doing something the government doesn't want you to do with it, they'll find a way to try to take it from you and destroy your family and your credibility. Now... Once I learned this this family was Mormon, I started to wonder if maybe it didn't have deeper roots than any of us could possibly even imagine. And the, BN, the BLM thing was real. I'm not saying it didn't happen. And these guys did stand off down in, uh, in Nevada. But, you know, why? What was really the point of all of it? And I, I don't see the, the government of any country doing something on that scale without a purpose. And I think it's to help the divide and conquer that much further because you're going to have people that side with both. They're going to side with the free man and they're going to side with the government. And as long as we have that constant pounding and friction, then eh, we're probably going to be like this forever. Anyway, what have I got on my little brain today? Um, I think that bringing illegals into other countries, you know, the the U.S. goes in, bombs the shit out of some place, makes it completely unlivable, and then they got refugees they don't know what to do with, so they send them somewhere. Well, doesn't it start with the destroying their homeland thing? How does that part of it always seem to be overlooked? Yeah, I very rarely ever hear. Oh, the uh, English and the Germans are having such trouble with these refugees that the Americans made for them. <laughs> because, well, and then it was the Americans and the English and the Germans and the French and the whoever else signed up to that shit so they didn't become a victim of it. You know, big money's just, it's insane. Yeah, I don't know where to go with that concept. I complain about it, but hey, we've got things to like add-on crimes like what I was talking about with the bike I get pulled over for whatever they're you know what I can't even remember they never wrote it down it wasn't a charge so the reason they pulled me over and the result of what happened were uh, coincidence they didn't really have anything but they've managed to um, take such good control over us that if the cops say, you know, do this, you have to, or now they're going to, what? They're going to either arrest you or shoot you. They're not shy about it. I've seen some pretty uh, disturbing things. Rob Rob works, he puts up a shitload of those fucking cop links on the RLM. Uh, wow. Sometimes I look at them, and sometimes um, just a title is enough. You know, I mean... I don't live like that anymore, so it's, there's nothing entertaining, there's nothing uh, I'm going to learn from it. My prejudice towards the police is never going to change. If they all started wearing pink tutus and kissing people on the mouth, it wouldn't be enough. They, they've they already done so much damage, like with the asset forfeiture. <laughs> oh, God. That 
Google that sometime and see how much damage they've they've done to people that didn't do anything except have possessions that the government didn't want them to have. And then once you go to court and fight them, it takes five to eight years. <laughs> so so they, they take your shit, and then you got to get more money to get lawyers to get your shit back. <laughs> so so if, if it's uh, innocent until proven guilty, what are they doing? How do these people get to the point of corruption that they get to? And it's okay with the society at large. The society doesn't resist it. The society doesn't uh, organize and, and stop it. And the laws get tighter and tighter every year, at least from what I've seen. Maybe I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, somebody send me a link. I'm sitting right here in front of my RLM chat. I'm a little be I'm a little ahead of you, or behind you, or ahead of you. Well, one or the other. There's a minute minute delay, so I'm behind you. I guess. I'm not sure how that works out. I'm not smart enough to do the math. We better get us a mathematician in here and sort it all out. But, no, nah, I'm not interested in that. What am I interested in? Hey, Meister Bro, he needs more sugar in his coffee. He said, be right back. What do you think of that, people? <laughs> Is that mind-shattering chat for you or what? Um, Anyway, the, are the kids in the RLM playing well together today? Let us t let us take a look and see. Maybe I'll have my friend Hank come over here and tell you people where to go. <laughs> I, I can't I can't believe that Henry Kissinger is still alive and and still making the rounds of the seats of power, and his voice is heard, and people do what he says. I wonder why that is. Hmm. It's the money, dude, Mr. Anti says. But I don't know what to... Because we're on a delay here. So that, that kind of fit what I was yakking about, about old, old uh, Mr. Kissinger. He's, well, he's one of my favorites. I, I, got, um, I got a real kick out of his quotes. If you Google his quotes sometime. He had opinions about stuff that... If you read what he, they say he said it, I don't know if he said it, I didn't actually hear him, damn it, because I can do his voice. So then I could say what he said. <laughs> but I've just read it, and for all I know, it's just an, another story. And not like it matters anyway. I like the Woody in stand-in idea. It's the money, dude. I like the Woody stand-in idea. Stand. I don't know what he's standing in, but <laughs> I'm participating in the chat out of time. And oh, Grimner put up a link that says flashiswrong.com. I got to open this just to enter time. Oh, we're having trouble finding that site. Well, there you go. <laughs> Flash is wrong. Yeah, I'm getting punked on the RLM by the, the main cheese. <laughs> And here in Denmark, they got a saying amongst the, the people I've met. And that's pretty much, if that you haven't been teased a little bit, uh, people aren't very comfortable around you. If you've known them a little bit, and, and they're they're walking on eggshells around you, you know, minding their P's and Q's, they don't want to hurt your feelings, they either think you're a pussy or they don't care for you, one or the other. And if they do care for you, they give you a little shit and, test you out and see what you're made of because there's a way to do it without being personal <laughs> i've i've learned to uh adapt in language because i'm limited to english and you know, there's no way to follow all these different dialects of uh, danish and they all know it so there's a very few select that didn't seem to want to learn to speak english when they're when they were in school and uh, they're mostly the younger ones actually the older people I meet, the more of them I meet, the more I find out. Most of them, they've traveled and been around, and they speak more than one language. I, there's a, there's the bar I go to that I'm really fond of, and across the walkway, on the other side of the main street, is a little like a cafe, sandwiches and coffees and you know sweet drinks and whatnot, and the they work a lot. There's a 
a lot of people and, and they stay busy and there's a few businesses that are all connected to each other. Well, the woman that runs that particular store was sitting out having a cigarette when I was and she turns out to be from Spain. <laughs> Speaks English, Danish, Spanish, blah, 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 blah. And I get to, you know, I get to meet these people and everybody's really just nice about what's going on around us you know there's nothing to fight about or argue or i guess you could make it but then the bikers would have to come and kick people's ass and nobody wants that because <laughs> there's no police you know there's police you can call them but there's so little to, to call them about here it's very difficult to explain i think the uh mentioned that the train train door got busted open <clears throat> but I'm so used to the walk that I think the shock of it passed and I didn't notice if now uh, if they repaired it or not and it's been a few weeks so they probably did but that kind of stuff is so out of pocket except for in the one place in town that I know of the train station they get the vandals will come and do their little vandal thing but here in Denmark just like uh, most places the train is state in the train the state circ and because of, yeah but because of that they have uh the surveillance cameras on and you know they videotape everything for our protection not only to mention to prosecute any idiot that's stupid enough to break the law on a you know camera <laughs> but you know just like anybody else there there's going to be a monkey in the in the work somewhere to create a disturbance let's see He's out smoking watermelon. Who? Oh, get Woody. Oh, um, Woody. <laughs> wow. Miss Kate, you're you're a funny, funny, funny. Mm. Standing in for Vinny. I'm standing in for Vinny. This is my game. Vinny comes along and plays along with it. But that's fine. Poor Chloe. Sometimes I don't understand your typing very good. Maybe my English skills are weak. <laughs> but, eh. Who else is there to pick on except for the only woman in the room besides Miss uh, Kate? Right, J. Dredd? <laughs> women are all evil. <laughs> Have you guys... <laughs> I, I've, I've yet to open any of this crap. But sometimes when I visit the RLM chat room... There are links on here called MagTow. <laughs> I had to ask my wife what that was about because I didn't really want to open it and actually see it. I, I, it was like a train wreck, you know. I just wanted to look on it. Wow, is that really a foot in that guy? Oh my God, it is. Okay, then turn away. So, it crosses my mind. This guy posts this stuff on here all the time. Is there anybody else that, that is in that group? You know, can you write on the chat if you're a MagTow besides the normal people that are? I'd like to see it. Hey, maybe Miss Kate's a MagTow and we, we just think she's a girl. Hmm. No, I I was kidding, Miss Kate. It's just that, on you know, online, Jesus Christ, we're all fucking beautiful and we're all successful and we all have this and that and the other thing. Because it's only in real life that you meet people that that don't. <laughs> but I've yet to meet a poor person on the internet. <laughs> uh, except for maybe Vinny. I think Vinny's, uh, Vinny's outlook on money is a little different than most of us. <laughs> and I don't think I'm talking behind your back there, Vincenzo, because I got that shit from you. <laughs> okay, wait a minute. I'm going to go to the chat. So this is difficult. I'm I'm not really into um, reading links about you know burnout shit that's been going on for two thousand years. I'm tired of all that crap. I mean, what does it take for people to realize that the problem is the game? You know, it's not how you play in it. It's that it exists at all. And then, of course, the next question is, well, what would you do without it? Stay small. It's this growth and all this having your t-shirts made in China and your socks made in Scotland and, you know, your car made in Germany and 
your beer made in in Austria, all that all that global shit's really what's fucking us all up. But the greed factor won't. It's never gonna stop. I think we're all addicted to uh, to a point of no. Re- we're at, we've hit critical mass. So the only thing after critical mass is collapse. And no matter what anybody does to this game. The big wigs just keep propping it back up and saying, "Yeah, well, just print some more money. Everything's fine. Go back to work." <laughs> and it, it's ridiculous to me because it's all—it's it's a common fact. The money has no value. Valueless paper, fiat means nothing. Plastic, same thing. <clears throat> Finance has been re-defined. Uh, to suit the crime that the government does to us. And as a collective, we just go, oh, okay, can you at least put a glove on that so it doesn't hurt so much, please? And you stand in line. And I'm not accepting me from any of this. I'm in it, too. It's just I'm talking. So, you know, for all the people like get mad at me for, for accusing, fuck, how could I possibly know it if I didn't exist in it, you know? It's just my tolerance level for uh, paper games and verbal games is very narrow, you know. Um, it's too much, there, you know, there's too much in life to absorb, to absorb anything, I mean, not to, to absorb anything, but to absorb all of it that we're taught we're, are necessary things to know. And then you, you waste all your fucking time learning these valuable, necessary fucking things to, to know and then you grow up and you never use them and all that they're just memories of oh i did this in a place with some books but you didn't learn how to balance a checkbook or how to get a job or what a job was they just taught you a lot of crap you know math and science that if you didn't go into those fields what good would they ever do you you know cuz i don't know maybe i'm just kind of heady about it because I learned how to do simple basic math at like four, three or four. My father was already on me on that. So by the time I went to school, I, they weren't teaching me much. And which really, my mom to, my, before my mom died, she, she did tell me that by teaching me to read and, and do math before I went to the kindergarten, that uh, got her bitched out at school for doing it. They were really upset that she'd already taken it upon herself to teach me these things <laughs> so the, the school trap was being laid when I was just first getting in, involved in it and I don't know I see I see people on the RLM who are pro um, education and well it, it's all relative you know if if you succeed from something well then you're gonna like something and I just really don't see the necessity for an organized thing to waste 12 years of your life teaching you a bunch of crap you'll never use you know that's why we have people getting inoculated and that's why we got people that want to decriminalize hemp because oh they were wrong no they weren't wrong you were lied to well not you but people before you were lied to i was talking about that the other night how how the hell could reefer madness have ever been taken seriously enough by a person to believe that that's what happens when you smoke a, a marijuana cigarette and it's they even changed the name to make it sound even more threatening so they said it in espanol and uh it was cannabis the whole time <laughs> then vinny we did a show together about a year, maybe a year and a half ago. He sat in on a dork table with me. And he explained how the state, the government, federal, state, whatever, have been prosecuting the wrong strain of cannabis the entire time the prohibition was uh, was uh, was working for him. So my, my input tells me it doesn't matter, you know. They got a bunch of idiots with guns that they're not smart enough to to get a career and do something that's good for people. So they're going to run around beating people up and getting, you know, protecting and all that shit, which is no, I don't I don't buy any of it. 
but here we are you know so how can people be so different about looking at the end result of a situation and then we all have our own personal outlook on that situation so we all think we see it differently you know and some people are for propping it up and continuing it and some people aren't and i would probably guess the ones that aren't the ones that will give you the most resistance are the city dwellers the packed you know hundred thousands and millions and all that kind of crap the big numbers you know like copenhagen where your whole life is that bit of dirt you've been on for your whole life so you really don't you don't know there's anywhere else to go (laughs) in the first place and uh i'm only going off what you know the things that i was told but then I broke the rules and, and found out that most people were just telling me a bunch of bullshit. You know, the truth of what what life has in store for you know for a person is their own personal thing, and it, it's not a group. The group doesn't decide, but the group does decide. But it didn't. This is a perversion of how it should be. You know, it's like these. Uh, uh, advertisements for this and advertisements for that and buy a this and the girls will love you buy her this and you know, blah 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 diamonds uh, certain kinds of wine <laughs> you know it it's 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 uh the equivalent to me it's like uh dressing up a poodle it doesn't really fucking matter how much dressing up you do that thing is a poodle when you started and it's a poodle when you finished (laughs) still a poodle so why would i be more interested in you know in this brand of poodle food than this other brand of poodle food and they they get us through like um I believe they get us through waves that we're not allowed to understand or there. We're not taught, not maybe loud. It's not modern and uh, information that's readily considered topical. Because <laughs> Moose doesn't like it when I say normal. And I don't know who, what am I going to, I could do average. Would that be, <laughs> I'm sorry I'm laughing at my own jokes, but. You know, the, the, just the reality of, of being alive at this time in history and looking through 40 years of changes that were so obvious to me when they were happening. And other people telling me that I was crazy. I didn't know what I was talking about. No, you're a, you're a conspiracy nut. I still hear it, too, um, on, the, on the Internet, but not so much in person. So here, here we'll shift. The other night, I did a, uh, I did a uh, surprise kind of dork table on a Tuesday, late night for me. Cirque had to work early in the morning and all. And uh, I was talking about not letting the drink get a hold of me. And, of course, this is what happens. When, when I talk about something, I forget it. <laughs> and then I go out and do it. So what happened is uh, Cirque says I got, um, I got daned at the bar. You know, people were, uh, I I had a time limit that I was on, and I was having, you know, moderate amount of drinks, and at the end of it, all of a sudden, there was a lot more to drink than I was physically capable of handling, but <laughs> what does a, what does a foreigner do in a foreign land? So, I did the exact opposite of what I wanted to do, so I've had to learn you know i had to learn my own lesson my own way and leave before the shit starts rolling and i could have but i didn't it was you know it was me and i don't like to blame other people for you know my my goofs in life you know i'm the one that did them but mm, that let me assure you uh my limit seems to be five (laughs) whatever the hell happened after five is the part that ruined the rest of it and uh i think i broke my shot rule i don't usually drink beer and shots i think i broke that one (laughs) but i don't know see there's that drinking culture where you know people get angry with you when you reject them in a 
public bar when you're when they're trying you know in their culture to be friendly with you so <laughs> it's the ultimate catch-22 but the point I'm still gonna you know I'm not gonna dodge that I knew it was time to leave before but I, I stayed beyond it anyway and I shouldn't have so there you go I'm living proof that my you know my own theories I can prove them all by myself, but yet I have all these millions and billions of people all around me to watch and learn from their mistakes. But for some reason, I like to make my own, you know, and try to defy the laws of, of existence. You know, I'm going to I'm going to do this to an excess and no no bad things are going to come from it because I'm special. Or I don't I don't know. It, and it's not only with alcohol. I mean, I was just using that as an example. But I think that we can do it with just about anything. And and the people that do it the most are the ones that get revered as wonderful and brilliant and great. And to me, they're just a bunch of psychotic hoarders <laughs> that are trying to deprive everybody else of something that they need. And I'll stick with using the pot laws for that one. Because they can pretend all they want that new uh, new investigations just discovered and new science says and all this crap that they want to tell you, and if you fall for it, well, you know that's on you. It it's really not my problem. But the part that is my problem is these fucking voters that want to you know vote in, in the group thought the group think and the the right way for the church and all this crap that they pretend doesn't exist but it really does you know crying out loud obama was dodging the church he belonged to for what four years five years he kept denying it they had videotape and <laughs> everybody and that was involved was telling everybody yeah he's full of shit but somehow or another the way that handled the the guy handled the media through the white house so well that the public only heard what made him look good. It was like it was illegal to publicly display any anti-Obama. And we had that for eight fucking years. I was there for that shit. And, man, I was, uh, I remember the night, well, what was it, 2008, right? He came in into office, or was it four? I'm not sure of the year, but I'm sure it was, uh, might have been his second term. And uh, the black guys in the bar were all crazy about. We got him. We got him in. And I look back over those ten years, and what the what the voters accomplished in in my particular case was to uh, make my home as unlivable as as humanly possible for everybody equally. And I'm just not a big uh, rules guy. I don't think there's too many rules that. Everybody wants to control accidents and all this. Other, it, it's nonsense. It's it's just complete bullshit. My wife got into an accident walking our dog. Okay, stuff happens to people. That's life, you know. But we've been taught as a culture to put a financial premium on physical. You know, uh, if you break a finger, it costs this much. If you break a back, it costs that much. And the humanity in medicine, I don't know if there ever was any. You know, I've seen, I've seen those old movies about cutting people's legs off during the Civil War and, you know, uh, all that horrible shit. And I would assume it's true. I, I'm not going to say the Civil War didn't happen or any of that. I'm just saying I wasn't here, so history has been watered down and lied to uh, you know we've been lied to about it for so much in so many different ways for so long that i just got to be kind of doubt what's that doubting thomas guy you know i don't believe if i didn't see it maybe it didn't even happen so i'm using that to uh, end my life with instead of you know worrying about where i've been all and what i've done all that kind of crap people do i guess uh I try to focus on where I'm at now and where I'm going. You know, not so much tomorrow, but you know, today the sun's still out. It's a uh, little cloudy. Got rained on on the way to the store. You know, my boring little life here in Denmark um, pleases me. Seems to please my wife. I've managed to uh, 
make a few acquaintances, you know, and then I went to the pub today to have a beer between shopping and uh, the bartender says to me, you look bored today. And I thought, wow, no, I'm just kind of nervous. I'm doing this thing with my buddy in, in uh, Arkansas today and I'm thinking, of th- what am I going to say? And I can't never really do that. I plan stuff and then it never happens the way I plan it. I just talk about whatever comes to mind or the RLM chat gets my attention or something. But it's just amazing to me that today I wasn't in a particularly talkative mood. And <laughs> Okay, I am see Moose Girl saying it did happen flash, but I got talky and... Uh, <laughs> oh, the yeah, the Civil War. I'm just being sarcastic, Moose. You know, it, it's... Because it other people can take how I speak i say i don't believe in a concept that doesn't mean i don't believe in an action Uh, it means like the like the cherry tree story about washington uh, the magic bullet about kennedy things like that some things the bigger things world war ii obviously took place i got relatives that grew up in it well i had relatives. they're all gone now so you know i'm what's left of uh the end of that era yeah, I think so. She's tapping me on the knee. Uh, and, yeah, Moose, I didn't mean to get you all excited to make you type, you know, like I'm some kind of nut job. It's just <sighs> how I mean it is we're told things uh, for a reason. And then the details of those things are explained to us so that we'll behave in certain ways, I think. And... uh <laughs> yeah no anesthetic and how you know i i would assume that's true i'm just not sure because the chinese were using um hemp and heroin five thousand years ago so and according to what i've read of history they were using hemp during the civil war so why didn't they have any anesthesia doesn't Mm -hmm. okay nobody had heard of peyote or heroin or or pot but of course they did they were selling it in drug stores they were selling laudanum so mm, i think somebody's um now it could have been because of where they were located but still you'd have uh, travel lines you could bring supplies in or you'd carry a certain amount of supplies and if you're going to go kick somebody's ass uh maybe a (laughs) <laughs> what would you call it uh an emergency uh aid kit would be a good thing to take along and in those days it would have been laudanum and maybe uh some heroin opium i'm not real good on my, all my specifics i'm not an educated fella and my dog's barking her lungs out for your musical <laughs> entertainment today on the dork table <laughs> even my dog's a dork i mean crying out loud couldn't just be me Let's see. I don't know. What do... You know, what do we have to do around here? Uh, We pass information on, you know, back and forth and ideas. And I think we try to make the best of, you know, what's seemingly a bad situation. And, yeah, I know. I I say bad, but uh, I've, I've got a good deal in life because I believe that my mind is right. You know, I could be a victim of anything I chose. Fuck, I'm Jewish for fuck's sake. But I don't think I could talk circle line and to go down to Israel to, uh, you know, fit in with my people. (laughs) Lucky fucking me, because I don't really want to go there anyway. But, you know, this gang thing and this country thing and oh i belong to this and oh i belong to that and i don't i the only thing i really think i belong to is cirque everybody else is just kind of in the way you know but not physically in the way because when i'm physical and i go to the, to do my my responsibilities in the relationship you know because i i said i do certain things and by doing them i've just kind of become a part of the uh of the fabric of of the city 
and even the older people you know, that that have been here their entire life some of them there's the one guy in the wheelchair that calls me jesus he must be 75 or he might be older than that i don't know he might be younger than that but he's very uh very worn and torn a man you know the the age on his face but he's very smiley very happy all the time and he knows every fucking buddy so to have a, a guy you know in in the public eye and he drinks in public so he's not like a, the mayor or anything but to have a guy like that to be nice to you every time you see him is it's pleasant you know instead of go home you yankee <laughs> all that shit that i heard in kirkwall scotland you know well kirkwall orkney it's it's not really scotland but that only oh, that that argument in itself was fun because royal people want to debate who owns the bit of dirt you're standing on or laying on or sitting on or working on or driving on or whatever you're doing on it. They want to own it and they want you to pay to use it. And wow, if that idea hadn't been beaten out of us by now, then it, it probably never will be. We're, we're probably stuck doing this for eternity. Responsible people, um, that went out of style, what, back in the, probably the 1850s or something, when, uh, uh it, anti says, Flash, you are needed, the earth wants you. Oh, I got a quick one for you today. I went to go to the pub to have a beer, and on my way to the store from the pub, I passed by a kid that must have been four, five, six inches taller than me, wearing a bright red Flash logo shirt. And I didn't, you know, I was on my way to do something, so I didn't have uh, really the time to, to sta stop and bother the kid about his shirt. But if I see him again, <laughs> I'll, know, I'll recognize that. So I got on my way to do a dork table, with my alias Flash, I got to see a Flash T-shirt in Denmark, of all pl and that's what I mean is things are so uh, coincidental. A couple of years ago, I was went to the grocery in the evening to go get my morning milk for coffee to have coffee with Cirque in the morning, and there was this just this gigantic kid, must have been about six foot four, wearing a L.A. Dodgers hat. And before I could really think, I'm already reacting. And I looked at the guy right face to face and I said, you're not from fucking L.A. Oh, come on. And and I didn't mean to say it that way, but it just was so, I don't know, weird to see what I was seeing that I blurted it out like a monkey. And But the kid smiled back. He looks down at me and he goes, yeah, I, I, I'm not from there. <laughs> it, you know, in a broken english and we smiled and, and that was the end of it but uh sometimes i'm so american that i forget when i'm over here that swearing isn't as uh it's not as controlled people aren't as insulted by language <laughs> that in itself is another world but uh yeah uh boy americans are some what do you call it we got some censorship going on in America, my brothers and sisters of the Republic. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Stealing laptops. I don't have no idea. No, I was reading the chat out loud in my marijuana stupor because the mind just, I don't know, it starts and stops like it's uh, on some kind of a drug. <laughs> anyway. Isn't that funny? A drug. I was reading, speaking of that, I was reading a, uh, an article on the minds.com site that I visit. And uh, it's amazing how few people are aware that Rockefeller medicine is... Uh, it was Deke Jackson that put the video up. I posted it on my page because, you know, he's a comedian and he makes fun of it. And what he was talking about was how Rockefeller medicine has killed more people than all the illegal drugs con combined all over the globe. <laughs> From one side of the world to the other. Illegal this and illegal that does not even come near what legal is. So, you know, there there's another guy. I, I really like him, and uh, but 
we're a minority. I mean, there's there's just no way around this. The, the mainstream is never going to uh, approach us with anything other than contempt. It's beyond their ability. I think they're I think they're like fucked out of it already. Their their minds are so gone as far as being capable of wanting to be free of the game that they live to play the game and, and they want the game. And I believe that the the rest of us are cannon fodder for their fucking game. And I've proven it time after time with links like uh, the one with uh, Bill Clinton apologizing for experimenting on American, <laughs> the American public without their knowledge or consent. Apology. Oh, we're sorry. We were just experimenting around. So it just everything that I've said in my opinion can be backed by proof through the politicians that have held these seats since I was a child and beyond, you know, but, you know, all I've got to consider is the time I've been here. I don't really, uh, you know, I'm not all big on the history. Uh, I've heard too many versions of the same story that I saw happen to believe any one story about something I didn't see happen. So you have to kind of cherry pick the, the shit you want. It, so it's a big game. You know, it's like a personality contest or a beauty contest. And that, to me, doesn't doesn't fall into the real category. You know, real is what I can see with my eyes, feel with my fingers, or smell, or taste. Eh, those, are, those things are real. Here. And the butt. Here. Now, when you get into hearing, your hearing can be deceived through lies. Then your eyes can be deceived through visual deception. And people openly do these things in, at levels of government, finance, uh, all these things that we all depend on are all proven to be crooked, corrupt beyond our total... We can't even imagine how corrupt this whole fucking thing is. And we're all held hostage playing it. And if you dare to resist, guess what happens to you? Hmm? Hmm? Go on, guess. Vinny E. stood up, Flash. What he stood up to... In, was he in the toilet? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what stood up means. No, Vinny. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Vinny stood me up. Yeah, he, I'm sorry, Grim. I was reading it in the wrong tense. Yeah, that's what I mean is we, we read things to suit our own thinking process. And how we're, at, you know, what you're doing at the moment will, it will make you read the four words in, in a certain light that they're not written in. <laughs> and that's the, the beauty of communication. And it's all right, Vinny stood me up. I think I got over my uh, self-consciousness about doing this because it's just my opinion about you know, how I see shit and stories about crap that happened or I did or whatever. And in the overall, it, it doesn't amount to anything. You know, it's just a story in a in a blink of somebody's life. And there's billions of us, you know. So how do you care about yourself first and not look like a complete and total uh, narcissistic fuck you know but then if you don't take care of yourself first what good are you to me you know if my wife didn't take care of herself how the hell is she gonna get make me coffee <laughs> she's tasted my coffee and said hmm. <laughs> oh i think i'll do this for you <laughs> my so my evil you know my evil lazy plan works <laughs> right honey <laughs> yeah. yeah that anyway so yeah big pharma turns out big pharma kills more people yearly than all the illegal pharma combined on the whole globe and that's just the big pharma in america that they're accounting for and they got big pharma everywhere so they're killing us they're they're killing them off a little bit now here's something i got more of a question for i got google right in front of me but i don't know if i read this or if i heard this and i don't really want to start research while i'm doing the show <laughs> but i read that ddt killed the mosquitoes that bite and cause malaria i read that somewhere once and then i also read that ddt was banned globally 
because it killed birds. It did damage to some birds. Now, if we got a DDT expert on the RLM, and there's a link that'll set me straight once and for all, I'd like to know what the truth of that story is. And this is what I mean is you read things, you hear things, and how there's so fucking much crap always being thrown at you. How the hell do you know what you know? All you know, well, me, I'm saying you like I always do, but all I know is that I'm repeating something I heard that for some reason my mind accepts as a true or a, you know, a belief. I can go with that. And then there's some things that I look at and go, no, that's not possible. That's just nonsense. So I assume we all do that to some level. But then I see people that do things like vote or want the uh, military and the police and senators and congressmen and all this shit to run things. But they can't see the results of the things they want them to run are a result of them running it. So why, instead of shutting it all down and starting clean, is probably the only answer outside of uh, violence there is. You need an agreed upon, uh, well, I guess the, the desire to go forward is always going to be stronger than the retreat and a fresh start. I didn't do it today. I left the house. It was just overcast. I get five houses down the road. It starts to rain. And it's not a real heavy pour, but it's sprinkly rain. And I thought of myself, I went, hmm, well, no, nah, I left the house. Let's, let's do what you always do and go to finish this. You know, because I started it, and by God and country, I'm going to do my little, you know, it's a mile or a mile and a half walk to the place I'm going. It never rains for more than 10 minutes at a time here any damn way. So I went, and I survived the great rainstorm and made it and came home. <laughs> but it's just that little idea that uh, I don't like to, to turn around and abandon even something that small. So I'm going to get on the radio and say that we need to abandon something like nuclear. <laughs> Nobody is going to agree with that. I mean, the the few people that would agree with it would be so minuscule that it, it's probably not even a calculation. <laughs> we need 5%. We need 5% real bad. <laughs> and I think we got like 0.73 three percent or something it's it's not very impressive because if you go against the grain of the government it puts you in a bad light with people that like government <laughs> so it's another divide and conquer we we're pretty well cooked i mean i'd like to see an answer to it. i came up with one i get laughed at about it stop lying stop killing people and then grow hemp and inside of six months you got a brand new planet but we're a bunch of angry uh, unreasonable overeducated kind of like gnomes you know little robots and we we fall in little groups and do the what we're told by our group leader <laughs> and, and then there's some of us that uh, as much as humanly possible without breaking the game Try to just avoid as much of it as possible, you know. And it's not a popular thing to avoid it. And it's not a popular thing to retreat and start fresh. So what seems to be going on is they just keep trying to fix a broken machine. You know, there's there's no answer to this. We keep getting told there's an answer. So I think if you tell the bulk of the people that... You know, in their fear of what would we do without you, they settle for a ass whipping that they wouldn't need to have if they stood up against it. But now nah, I think the fight's been whipped out of the the collective, and now there's nothing left but submission and compliance. And if you don't, you're not going to get your card. And if you don't have your card, well, then you won't be able to eat. And if you can't eat, then you'll probably not live very long. And there you go. But people are fucking creative. So you know what they started to do? Pitch tents. Live in the street. Now, in a civilized society where there's more people, uh, there's more vacant 
property than there are people living outside. Yet, the systems that we live under, they seem to want it that way. You know, and this is while, you know, people go to into politics and and amass fortunes while they're, while they're holding those seats. And the people that they represent get poorer and poorer and end up in shittier and shittier places. But it instead of change, is maybe that was the change they were talking about. Maybe we just got duped as a collective and what what they meant. It, just like everything else, it wasn't ethical and it wasn't moral, but it was legal. So they took a few million people's homes away from them, you know, in an unethical, but yet legal fashion. And they made sure that they didn't have jobs because, <laughs> because uh, the world couldn't, well, American world couldn't keep up with the American wages. You know, if you're going to, work for an American company like when I started in in the late 70s and our our uh, cost of living and wages and all that it was pretty good and we we made a good amount of money for the for the shit job that we did and as the years rolled on the wages kept going up but the price of things was going up so much faster that it didn't really matter you could always live in debt you know and promise to pay and oh well I'll just remorph I'll refinance the property and and as a 19 year old watching people do all this crap I just no I'm not are you nuts what is wrong with you you want to be in one place and spend the rest of your life there you know working for one guy and no no I, I saw what it did to my dad and I don't want to do that and I was the exception to the rule, not. <laughs> it's a, it's kind of a shame that there's not more uh, free thinking people out there that are willing to. Uh, it's it, it when you say it out loud, it sounds like you're breaking laws and all that stuff, but it's really not. It's more like, you know, I do the minimal amount that I have to to keep them off my back. That's, I guess that's the best way to explain it, but to somebody else, you know, like my dad who, who worked a one job and, and retired and all that kind of thing, I was not, you know, I wasn't how people should live. But then at the end of my, at the end of his life, then he changed his mind and said, well, maybe I was wrong <laughs> because, uh, I think what happens is we, the ones, some of us actually get to grow older and change some people go through their life and they stagnate and they're the same at 30 as they are at 50 as they are at 70 and nothing you, you wouldn't know the difference in 40 years same fucking person and then there's people like me where i don't think i'm the same person as i was when i was 20 but i am you know i'm me but there's been internal mental changes that uh yeah to work i understand all that see moose that's the the whole thing i wasn't so much uh, i was put out of that system by the system so mm, no it didn't work for me they they just uh they were all about breaking up the family and getting rid of me because i didn't i didn't speak in in terms that they wanted to hear and the state was real big about control and what you say and wh how you live and all that kind of horse shit so there you go they wielded their muscle of power and the wife got what she wanted you know so uh, I don't know there's there's really not a good way to look back on an, all that state shit they did and uh the compliance of the wife to go along with them and make me out to be some kind of bad guy so that she wouldn't suffer, you know. Basically, it was a trade-off. It was her, you know, giving me up to the state so that she could continue to have her children with her. That's what they threatened her. So, um, I, would, I don't know why anybody would make any other decision but the one she made. 
but it didn't leave me with a, a taste for, you know, family life and values and working. I fuck all that. They showed me all that crap was a bunch of nonsense. And the, the only thing the state was concerned with was breaking up as many families as they could. And as I've aged, the other day, I met a guy that had been through a similar situation as myself. And uh, I saw the struggle he's going through. But he's in a much smaller um, smaller country. And things will work out. His, his people are more, uh, what would the right way to be to explain the Danish outlook? I would say the Danes are more compassionate towards their own than Americans are to anybody because there's, in my opinion, there's no such thing as an American anymore. Everybody's got a state they're from or a football team or a freaking uh, NASCAR fucking car or some stupid thing like that to identify. Oh, I love Alabama. I love New York. I, okay, well, where does the USA part come in all this shit? I, I, I lost... I Not so much interest because i pay attention and i make jokes about it but i lost the uh the interest in being in in the game you know and, and participating it just seems so pointless t to me because i don't uh i don't agree with any of the general things that people support israel for fuck's sake i went off on tuesday night about israel but i'm the only one well maybe not on the rlm but and not the only one. There's just so few people that have a, a truly informed uh, model of what Israel is. They're going off media and they're going off religion and church. And those are the people that are lying. It 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 just it's gotten so out of hand over so many thousands of years, and the stories have been passed around in so many different ways that. I don't think there's any way to to clear it all up. It's just uh, like that big, it's a big bowl of mush. And the closer you look at mush, all you see is just smaller pieces of mush. There's nothing to identify. And that'll just leave you, well, leave me where I'm at now, which is, boy, these people are fucking everybody all at the same time. And there's no resistance to it at all. Zero. Zero. I mean, you can't resist it. There's no, see, Moose must hear me think and think I'm saying that I would, in, re, I would uh, recommend people resist it. But the truth is, no, I wouldn't say, re, I would, what I do is avoid, you know, resistance just gets you a fight. Now, avoiding things, eh, that's a, that's another story in itself because, uh, you choose your own path in this life if you want to. And sometimes, um, I don't know, you make a decision and, and there comes like legal ties to it. Or like me being separated from my daughter was not my fucking idea. But I'm the one that was removed. So it left me in a state of mind that I'm never going back to that again. That That's finished. But then again, I look at that the same way as it did going to the store today. I started this thing, and I'm going to go through and see where it goes. And maybe that in itself is the is the difference. Is I'm I'm not bound by boundaries and you know states and people tell me I do what they say, paperwork, blah blah blah. But you know, outside of uh, not being a threat to people in physical form and uh, just doing normal, average, run-of-the-mill things. Run-of-the-mill. How's that, Moose? Um, average. <laughs> uh, when you're not sticking your, your nose into other people's business and, and creating a big disturbance, then life. Will, what can life bring you besides an accident? And if you're half aware of what you're doing, those things don't happen. But mm, I get called overcautious, too, like a... <laughs> but I'm going to be 59 in a few more, uh, about two months here. I should live that long anyway. It's the 11th of August. Yeah, we're coming up on Grimner. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be older than Grimner <laughs> soon. And, uh, let's see. Grimner's putting up links about 
Tap wires, new evidence support likelihood that the UK interfered with the 2016 US election more than Russia. Well, yeah, isn't that nice, Grim? Aren't, aren't we glad that somebody took responsibility for all that damage they did? <laughs> Elections. <laughs> wow, what a scam. Uh, I mean, crap. I was talking to Mary about this a few months back. I have no clue what goes on behind the walls of my neighbor's house and i'm looking at it maybe a uh, hundred maybe fifty yards from where i'm sitting there's small front yards so it might be forty fifty yards give or take and uh, i have no idea what the people inside the house are doing so if you know if that's the way you live and you let other people do what they do and you leave them alone and you don't call the police on them every time you see a car pull up to their house <laughs> or you see some somebody suspicious <laughs> walking through the neighborhood I, I think you know we're we're not taught that we're we're taught to live that way it, it's a it's a learned behavior to be suspicious and to be untrusting and Everybody's going to burn you, so you got to protect yourself from them. And Wow. I think it's a choice that I can make. You know, I don't, I don't want it to be forced on me by government. If I want to feel free to walk around my backyard naked, then I want to be able to go out there and fucking do it without police knocking on my door because the neighbor called because he was looking over my fence and saw me naked. It's like, well, what the fuck was he looking over the fence for? This is my yard. <laughs> and, and that, again, is basically the Danish logic that they would use. So if my neighbor looked over my fence and I'm out in the backyard naked, he's either going to smile and say hello or he's going to turn and avoid me. But he's not going to do is complain to a third party because he saw me doing something in my own yard. Now, other countries I've lived in aren't quite like that, you know. Or maybe it's the the population is so crowded together that they, they can't live far enough apart from each other to not be in each other's way and constantly, you know, be an inconvenience to the next guy. Well, let me go back to the chat. Anyway, Moose, I... You know, I, I know about your life story. I'm, I'm not judge. I never judge people's existence, you know. It's not you and it's not me. It's the game that exists that we're all in, you know. And it's how you play the game that matters. And not everybody can play uh, the way that I chose to. But then again, not everybody took the ass whippings I took. And if they did, they more than likely did, and they do live like I do, right, Rob Works Grimner? Hmm, hmm, hmm. These guys, they understand it, and it comes through in their, uh, their the way they talk on the radio when I've heard them speak. It comes across in the links they post about what they post, and their general chat. You know, they're nice guys, but they're quick to you know they're quick to opinions just like me. So uh, I just would rather there was more people that were like that than like uh, <laughs> the restricted mindset of a group thinker. And, you know, yeah, there is something. I'm compl I guess I'm complaining about it in my own way because I'm all about freedom of speech, but I'm not all about freedom of stupidity. You know, if you're given the opportunity to speak so that if you're wrong, somebody can go, hey, no, 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 you're getting it wrong. But we we passed that time in history, and it doesn't seem like there's a lot of people uh, getting involved making any corrections. You know? Well, they're decriminalizing shit, and they're finding new evidence and all this other lies and, and just garbage, but there's no... Uh, there's no answer that satisfies enough people, so they're going to just continue to do the same horrible shit they do. Anyway, like, for example, I watch Netflix as a form of entertainment. I'm a movie buff. Yes, I know. It's my shame. I've been ashamed of it, but I've been doing it for my whole life. So, sometimes I find the most tasteless garbage 
to uh, entertain my sick mind with because of the way I've lived, I suppose, you know. Some things were made normal through television in uh, my day that probably shouldn't <laughs> shouldn't have been, but they were. So now there's this like, six-year-old program on Netflix about a women's prison. And the stories are just so over the fucking top and nonsensical, some of it. But it's mixed in with enough true violence and mis, uh, uh, misrepresentation that some of it's actually believable. So if you're entertained by people being locked up, that's one thing. But what got me was they, uh, over the six years, have exposed on this Netflix program the corruption of the private prison industry and how what they've done to people over the years. And they used the females to do it instead of the males. So I thought maybe that would get more people against privatized prisons. And anyway, what happened is in this program, that not only does the prison stay in business and go on and on and on, but now they're going to open it up for... Uh, holding illegal aliens, detention centers, and they're going to build on to their existing for-profit prison system to imprison even more people. So, to me, it looks pretty much looks like the government's bringing this on itself, this foreigner crap and illegal alien nonsense. It... How in the hell would somebody that lives, say, 2,000 miles away from you, for example, what would make them wake up in the morning and an uneducated farmer that lives in the middle of nowhere and go, ah, oh, I'm going to go to America and start a new life? You know, where? Even if it was a fucking village, they speak whatever language is native to them. Why do they go north? What, what is that? Now, I don't see anybody ever asking, you know, why do they go there? They just assume, well, they come here for the welfare. Well, how do they know what welfare is? <laughs> Not only that, we're, you're talking about people that come over and have all the necessary documents printed, all in order, all written out properly, and no mistakes, and this, that, and the other, and they're illegal aliens that don't speak English. Well, how come all their documents are correct? <laughs> Hell, I had to, I had to to get a birth certificate and a what else did they make? You got me. I had to get a social security card again, and I had to do this and that in order to get the passport. You had to have other shit. So, wow. How how can people assume? <laughs> That the government doesn't help them do what they're doing. I mean, it, you can't try working with a government employee sometime and see where you get with them in English. It will never cease to amaze me how things look one way, and if you take you know three or four steps to the other side and stare at it again, all of a sudden you see something you didn't notice before, and. Uh, you know, there's no right or wrong to all this. This is the government doing what the government does. And they just roll with the crime. You know, they figure out what's going to make them the most money. And they make it illegal. This time around, it's illegal aliens. Because, hey, people, let me tell you a little secret. Did you know there was a time when people were encouraged to come to America to populate it? <laughs> Hey, take some land. We don't have... We There's plenty to have. <laughs> Go west! <laughs> there's Indians that are still living over there. We ain't taking it from them yet. Help, help, help. So, in a matter of, what I don't know, 100 years. Let's use the... I like 100. It sounds kind of cool. But in a matter of years, people were once told to grow hemp. To be, to be legal farmers, you had to grow a certain amount of acreage as hemp. And if you had a headache, you went down to the store and you went and bought some laudanum for your headache. And there was a time when you wanted a, a little marijuana, you went down to the, got your little bottle of CBD oil or whatever the hell it was at the time. I've seen pictures on, on the internet and they're pretty convincing. They look like old labels from stores and uh, 
the history seems pretty reasonable. Um, the Chinese have been around a long, long time. And if there's anything that I think of about my school days is how they didn't really want us to think too much about other countries besides how evil they were for the war that they started. <laughs> and, you know, uh, world geography, I suppose, summed up in a nutshell was, yeah, that these people started a war and those people started. War, 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 war. Hmm. Well, the war thing, the not being violent started at uh, a lot younger than I than uh, then I stopped at because when uh, I tried to get into the military when I was 16 and I think they said what kept me out was I wasn't willing to fight I said nah I ain't gonna kill anyone they went what my father had an attack he I thought he was gonna kill me but uh, apparently it was enough to keep me out of um, the three branches that I qualified I didn't try for the Air Force didn't like I don't like flying and I'm not afraid of it I just didn't want to fly a plane alone or it nah uh, walking in, walking on the ground is uh, just threatening just enough with uh, passing cars and people on bicycles and other people walking. Nah. So uh, an airplane is a stretch that I've never, but I've been up in them, and flown in them and whatnot. In fact, when my, my brother and my father used to go to Lake Elsinore to go skydiving on the weekends, my father, when he was a teenager, was in the military. And he was in the 11th Airborne um, skydiving and all that kind of stuff. Paratroopers, they called it, I think, in the day. Anyway, so when my brother was a year younger than me, but when we became legal age to go, my dad started to go again. And my brother started to go with him. And me, nah, <laughs> I said, oh, you guys, you want to, you know, you want to go up and jump out of a plane. I said, well, oh, no, and you call me crazy. But. My father talked me into going up in the plane with a chute, but not to jump unless the plane was going to crash, but uh, to go up as an observer and watch what they did. And that was useless because the plane is flying in one direction, and then when you jump out of the door, you, you're you behind, so there's nothing to see. <laughs> so they, you know, they tricked me one more time and got me to, to do what they wanted me to do, and they were dishonest about it so you know you live and learn and i never went back with them again <laughs> oh well okay rob work says most people in the air force never fly a plane <sighs> yeah well beside all that that was still the when i when i was 16 i was narrow-minded i i saw the military in in flavors you know the you had the plane flavor, you had the boat flavor, you had the gun flavor. And, you know, that was the mil the Marines and the Army. And that was it. Boat, plane, or gun. And no, <laughs> and as a result of that, I was not allowed to join the military unit. <laughs> they rejected me. So uh, along with that went any possibility of ever having a, a legal education. And I, I, at the time, I saw it as a sign. I went, wow, okay, I don't want to kill anyone. They don't want me to be in their gang. So, uh, okay, this is going to all work out for the better, and I'll just have a different kind of life than that. And apparently I was right. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I would have lasted. Whatever the enlistment was in the military, I would have got kicked out way before. Probably would have not made it through boot camp. Um, uh, at 16, it was pretty hard to tell me what to do without a fight. So I, on top of the not being aggressive to fight, I was aggressive to be told what to do. <laughs> so I don't know. The whole thing didn't make any sense at the time. But eh. So here we are. And I'm not an ex-military war hero. <laughs> yeah, Vinny, Vinny's gone somewhere. He's probably, I hope he found himself a girl. And just got tied up for the weekend and things just didn't go that be available way. You know, I don't wish Vinny any bad luck over ditching me on the radio. And besides, the way that bitch likes to talk, I'm amazed he didn't show up just to shut me up for five minutes. Me and Vinny go back a few years now. So uh, we, we have kind of a loose history with radio programs. And he's always a lot of fun because uh, 
that man is one of a kind. There is nobody like Vinny. And I wanted to give Miss Mary a thank you because I've been using the word dolt for a while now. It's a very obscure word and I wanted to to use it so it would stand out and you know be unique and I was really pleased that uh, Miss Mary used the word adult <laughs> and compared it to adult and I thought wow talk about play on words and and she even used my favorite word dolt so thank you Miss Mary and uh, if you know if the results go your way whatever that is well then you're gonna be happy but what about when the results don't go your way? How do you stay happy through something like that? I guess it would depend on what the results were. Hmm. Let us ponder. Hmm. How about <laughs> something that is to me as useless as possible? Who sits in the White House and pretends to make decisions about anything that fucking matters? And I say that because thanks to Larry Wood, I know the truth about how the uh, how the system is delivered to us on on the wavelengths that are probably the least useful for us. So things could be done in a much better way by making a few minus like minimal changes to existing things. You don't have to start out running, but he showed me that there's better ideas that were overlooked in the history to make the decisions that were made to use the crap that we have now. And they knew they were doing it when they did it. They knew it was inferior. So to ever think for five solid minutes that uh, we're ever going to have a, a good form of su or supply of fuel to operate on is eh. I've given it up. It's a daydream, you know. I, I thought it was fun, and I enjoyed it, but look what they did at Tesla. So, fuck you and your free energy, people. It ain't ever going to happen. We're slaves to oil. And we're slaves to oil through our joint stupidity because that's what there is, and it's good enough. And we can't get enough po people together at one time. It, what would it take? I bet it wouldn't take much because people do follow. So maybe we need, like, where Miss Mary lives, 10,000 people to go. You know what? I'm not using my electricity for five days. And in five days, I wonder how much the power company would lose through non-usage and be stuck with shit they couldn't sell. To the point where they go, okay, we'll drop the price. <laughs> the collective has power, you know, and it's it's been withheld from us and misrepresented. And, and you're supposed to chase other ideas like, you know, being a left club footed lesbian that with a lisp and, you know, and be part of a select group. <laughs> because those people need attention and it's a, it's a big distraction. <laughs> from the rest of the things that are truly important. I mean, and these these people will do anything to make what's going on happen. Like that, what that Bruce Jenner guy. He was a famous athlete. Now he's a famous woman. I read now he wants to be a famous athlete again. <laughs> so so science, you know, between science and uh, and media, these people were going to con us for you know, into believing anything. And and they've got the, the technology to do it. And maybe they can do it, but I don't want to change into a female. What the hell? I'm not crazy. Or <laughs> I, you know, I like I like life the way life truly is. So what I figured out how to do is to not be in such a a big herd that everybody wants to have a, a representative and a voice and oh look at me and dig this and so what I did was I toned it down to a place where I stand out so much that all I have to do for privacy is just sit alone <laughs> and very few people will ever penetrate that wall and say anything if they don't already know me and uh, I think that's just a common thing if you 
wanted to be with everybody, you'd sit up at the bar. <laughs> or if you'd go into smoke, you'd sit with other people that are smoking. If you're sitting alone, you want to be by yourself. It's it's not a crime. <laughs> it's it's not a crime to want to have 20 feet of space between you and the next person. And uh, where I'm from, there wasn't, at times, there wasn't that much space to be had because there were so many people in the bar <laughs> and i'm sure it gets that way here too i'm i'm just saying i i've gone when it's quieter and there's less people and i have uh more time to to just sit and look learn things like i learned how to play that game of pool i've learned everything about it but with a little practice i i won't be too awful bad people won't say oh god this guy plays terrible i don't want to play him but then again I learned how to play pinochle when I was uh, I was in my 20s. It's a it's a card game. You need partners. It's a four player game and you have if you don't play I'll I'll give you a rundown on it. But it's like bridge in the sense that you uh, you bid on your hand. There's cards that have value. There's ways to play your cards. But there's only tens and jacks, queens, kings and aces. There's no other face cards in the game and but it's the way that you play your cards that makes you good or bad and how you bid your hand and it's kind of complicated until you try it well i used to play this game with these guys that were uh, i was in my 20s and most of them were 45 to 60 ish and at first this woman taught me how to play and she played with the guys when somebody was missing from one of the games they let her sit in and she taught me how to play. So they trusted that if she taught me that I had learned the way they taught her and that I would hold my end of a partnership and they gave me a chance to play. And I did. And I came through and got to play. And it was the youngest player. And <laughs> it was like all oh, these old guys. But man, were they good with the cards. And, and they taught me how to be good with the cards. And, and with any game you're limited it's not infinite there's only so many moves you can make there's only only so many bids you you can make a bid and you can try to fill it and make or you can try to throw it there there's different strategies and growing up the way i did and falling into things like that playing pinochle with older fellas uh it wasn't common amongst my peers my peers thought i was kind of i don't know why do you hang out with those old guys? What's wrong with you? <laughs> I mean, play that old guy card game. What are you, weird? And I just accepted it. And instead of crying about it, I just, well, that's what you fucking think. Go, yeah, I'm going to go play Pinochle. <laughs> and it didn't last for but maybe a few months I was in that part of L.A. And then I, I moved on to some other, some other project or, I don't know, things were. I kind of went where I felt like going for a few years there. And one one year I'd travel a lot, and another year I'd try to settle down and stay in one place. And that went on, <laughs> that went on from I don't know, about nineteen to twenty something. And then even after that, it still took me a long time to to riddle, really settle down and and be part of a, a community and as a, as much as I was a part of the community I lived in before I moved to Scotland I was in North Carolina for a few years uh, I was still obviously an outsider to the community but they allowed you know they allowed me to be there and participate as, as much as uh, as I was not part of their game and and I can't explain it you know most most non you know anti-war non-gun loving people would get hurt and yeah people just kind of shook it off and said well that's that's how he is and with that one person would do it then other people it was just like following the herd i'd go from one place to the other and one guy knows somebody else at the other place and before long they just accept that's the way, just the way the old guy is, just leave him alone. And, but compared to these young 20, you know, 20, 25, 30 year olds, I was, I was older than them. I was in my 40s at that point. So, but being small, 
I think it it changes. It tilts the it tilts the appearance that you give off. People don't seem to be very uh, intimidated by a short fella. You know, short guys don't threaten anyone. But some reason or another, when I come around, it's not so much threatening. I feel it's just it's my appearance just people notice it um hmm. i remember <laughs> i've told this one before too a man named daryl back in in california back in the 80s uh and he, and he he was about six foot three he is pretty big size fellow he was a little overweight for his size so he weighed a ton and he was wearing this bright Hawaiian shirt one day. And he says to me, you know, can't you dress a little bit, you know, more toned down? You're going to attract attention. <laughs> to, to, to me, he, say, he said that. And I thought, well, isn't that the pot calling, what's that? The pot calling the kettle black, that kind of thing. And, and instead of getting mad at people, I just kind of roll with you know we all see things from our own side and and you can't not can't not help that but i think what you can be is told how to control it not use it and not be spontaneous with people and speak your mind because oh they might get insulted and hurt and all this other crap and i think what the the one liners and the the quips over life taught me is you can take this shit so seriously that even words bother you, then maybe something bigger is wrong than just words bothering you. Maybe it's deeper than all that. So here we are. And now when somebody, when I expect them to, to be upset at something I say, I can just assume they're, they're calling me a name in a foreign language I don't understand. I think I'd tell by the tone, but, you know, the words, ah, fuck, man words words just causes uh for the most part more trouble you know it's always the source of the problem and the cure and the answer but we always seem to have the problem and never a cure or an answer to anything but we're told we do and that's that's enough just the promise just like the money the promise is we're going to do research and you just give us more money and we're going to find a cure. And <clears throat> what they don't tell you <coughs> is they never needed to from the start. It was all a bunch of nonsense. And these these things that I say that are anti-society you know, society and anti-state and anti-Rockefeller and all that shit, they can all be proven. All you have to do is Google certain words, and a magic screen will come up before you. It's called a window. And within that window will be a link. And there will be a voice and film. <laughs> and people will talk, and they'll say things. And what happens is each of us will hear it in the light that we want to hear it in. Uh, that's what I've, I've just tried to accept that is... Whether I think it's true or not, whether I believe it or not, it doesn't matter to you what I think or what I believe. It matters what you think and what you believe. So, you know, that's why they, I say make your prison as comfortable as possible because we're all in one because of the circumstances, not choice. And, and it's, not a, a, it's not the kind of held hostage you can actually... You can't really show it to anyone. They, it's something personal that, you know, the, all this goes against my nature as a as a living guy. You know, as just as a man. Take Cirque out of the equation completely, and I got the biggest kick out of seeing the cucumbers out in the backyard growing on the plants that she planted. You know, because she wanted to see if she could do it and went wow look at this it's like the tomatoes now this year she didn't get tomatoes but she got cucumbers so no matter what she attempts to do if you know she pays attention to it she seems to follow through and, and end up with a product and i'm like wow so where would i want to take you know that kind of tenacity in life especially at this age and i'm i want to roller coaster through things i don't really want to spend my time you know 
toiling and drudge. I want things to be comfortable and and happy. You know, I'm old enough now that being angry is just a few minutes reading something stupid that Hans wrote on the RLM. You know, I don't want to be mad at anybody I know that I physically have to encounter. I'd rather be mad at a, an imaginary screen with imaginary words by a, an imaginary person. And to always try to keep in mind somewhere, even in the corner, this is all make-believe. It's only as real as I want it to be. And sharing that opinion with other people how could they possibly hear what I'm saying <laughs> the way I'm I'm hearing it? It's got to be way different than the uh, what the other guy hears. You know, if there's a disagreement, if you agree, and you find a I don't know what a, maybe a balance line, and you might, well I don't care for the way you explain it, but I have a similar concept of it. And even that would be a lot better than some of the things that we say to each other. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty mean to old Hansel, but... Well, the other day I was reading something he wrote about the National Socialists in America are actually accomplishing what couldn't be done in Germany. <laughs> And, wait a minute, I thought he was pro-Nazi. Well, I, I shouldn't pick on ants like this to this level, but I was under the assumption he was liking the Nazis. But what I read, the way I read, see, this is what I mean, interpretation. What I read seemed like, wait a minute, they're doing what you don't want them to do, that you wanted them to do there, but you don't want them to do it here. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. I'm so confused with people and their opinions about things that make absolutely no difference to anybody on a daily life thing. You know, it doesn't affect the price of the freaking food you're buying <laughs> or the price of the gas you're buying. The, the team you're on is just as bad as the team you're not on. How do you make that clear to somebody that's on one of the two teams <laughs> or, or even a third team even the independents i'm going to be independent by joining a group of independents no you're not you're forming a fucking gang of people that are in a gang that's what it is can't be anything else i'm making somebody laugh for somebody on the rlm i see lol from rob works Rob. Rob's one of my favorite people on the RLM. <laughs> I'll give you a little I'll give you a little sweet talk there, Rob Works. And um I don't so much side. That's not the thing. It's more the the independence of it's all garbage. Not one side is different than the other. They're they're different, but they're not. They're they're just mirror images of the same control. The same slave life that third parties want you to have so that they can live in a nice house and drive a good car. They're living off the backs of others. And they call it employment, but it's just indentured servitude 2018. It's no different. And unless you really can look at your career choice or your job and claim that every fucking waking moment you spend there doing shit for those people, you love every bit of it, then this doesn't apply to you, and you're special. But most folks in my history, and doing the kind of work I've done, I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a scientist, but you know, I've had many different kinds of work, some labor, some thinking. And the common link is everybody that I've ever encountered had to be there. They weren't there because they wanted to be there. That's why they were always drooling over their fucking vacations. And what I learned from that was if you don't commit to a job, <laughs> you don't need to have a vacation. You can just leave and have a vacation. It was called freedom. Freedom to move, freedom of choice, freedom of whatever I wanted to do. And I could live at any level of finance that I chose. I could go out there and work street jobs, making unloading trucks, 
cleaning parking lots. You know, when you're young, you get creative, and there's always something to do to make a quick 10 or 20 bucks to get a meal and or catch a bus or whatever the hell it could have been. And now these days, things are all automated, and there's so many people crowded in such small areas that without automation, we're just going to be tripping over each other. <laughs> Now, not me so much. I mean, this is where I took myself out. Cirque found a quiet, not so populated spot to to uh, reside. But where we were, as much room as there was, it was still, to me, crowded. Because uh, I, I'd been on that island for so long. And um, free of the crowds and the traffic and the noise. And I got to see a little bit of... Uh, Nature, you know, I lived off the water. Could go look at the ocean and see the birds feeding every day and things like that. That in the city were just no. <laughs> the the city part where I was raised didn't. It, you had a park, you know, but it wasn't a nature park. It was a man-made. So it was all synthetic. We had to drive out of town to the country where there was country to actually have like a stream or you know a forest to walk around in. But the neighborhood I grew up in, it was blocks and blocks, blo miles and mi I can't even tell you how many miles, but you could drive for, <laughs> wow, I guess from La Mirada, well, maybe before, probably Orange County to Hollywood without anything being built. Everything was built up by the time I was old enough to drive a car. There was no free land in that in that bit of road for about, I don't know, 60 miles maybe. But beyond it, they hadn't attacked all that. It's probably all been built up since I could Google and look, I-5. But, hell, I went to San Ys what was it? San Ysidro, Ysidro it's hard, hard to say, in some kind of Mexican, Mexican name, down by the California border. And what happened, I read, I think I saw it on the news, too. Some guy had gone ape shit and shot up at McDonald's down in San Ysidro, California. Don't remember the year, but I remember that I was curious enough. I wanted to go down south and take a look and see what the fuck was truly going on. But got some distracted and never made it to the kill sh the killer dealer site to see it and went back north or east or west. Might well have been east and abandoned the idea, so I never finished it. But I do remember the shooting and I remember starting the trip and going to you know most of the way to the place and then something changed my mind. So, you know, what interested me when I was 20 doesn't even, I wouldn't even bat an eyelash at a thing now like that. But strangely enough, the bar that I go to, this little town that we're in was, uh, uh, they made cannonballs and cannons, I believe. And part of their heritage is the cannon and the cannonball. And, you know, and they got placards. Or, well, I don't know what you call a placard, but in the bar where I go, they have a painting on the wall, some kind of exhibit painting looking thing. And it's got a cannonball and a cannon on it. And it says something in Danish. And I was kind of in a hurry to get home today. I didn't really want to stay out. And, uh, I, uh, overlooked taking a picture of it it would have took all of 10 seconds but i'll do it at another time and maybe circle tell me what it means you know i have those little problems not not being able to read the language will only cause me as much trouble as i want it to because if you ask people nicely they'll tell you shit so you know, but then again, I grew up in deceit land where, you know, they could be telling you it says something it doesn't say to make you look, do, you know, like a doofus. But I wouldn't expect that out of somebody in a situation where I'm at a loss for, hey, what does this mean? I, I don't think the, the kind of punking they would do to me here would be the rude kind. It would just be playful bullshit. You know, call you a name or some, make a, give you some stupid nickname, whatever it have you, but... Not on the personal, trying to make you feel bad level. Unless you're, the more involved with people you are, of course, the more personal they'll seem to get with you. Like, uh, I don't know, when when people disagree with me on the RLM, I've had a few of them insult Cirque to try to, to get to me. And I think, wait a minute, you know, 
when you get off the topic and you start bringing personalities of other people into shit, it, it's very, uh, hmm, what's the right word? Juvenile, you know, that's that's a child's tactic. That That's not something a grown-up does. But when a grown-up resorts to that, it's usually because they're out of ammo and they got nothing intelligent to say anyway. And when I do it, I keep it to adult. I don't bring up, you know... Uh, relatives into the thing well maybe i did with hands about the t-shirt you know, getting his shirt ironed for church but he wrote that i didn't make that up <laughs> i would i would never do that it's like making fun of grimner bad his dirty filthy fucking hippie ways and he just goes yeah so what <laughs> who gives a shit because you know like i think grim's been on the radio and the internet long enough to know that we're all a bunch of dumbasses. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Your friends are your friends, and everybody else, I don't know. They don't like you. It could only be because they disagree with your stand on a situation. And On the Internet, it can't be any deeper than, well, you think the world ain't round or flat, so you must be some kind of unintelligent moron. Now, I can live with that, but what nobody will do ever and nobody has done, show me a picture of the Earth from space. You got all this shit out in space. Prove it. And, hey, Vinny just showed up. Hey, I'm about ready to quit. Vinny can do a show after me. Mm. Well, I almost made it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, ten minutes of the hour, I managed to garbage about something for no reason for a long time i think i should get an award <laughs> but hey Vinny, why don't you do a show when i'm finished with this one and you can entertain the rlm crowd and all their friends and family mm. he says his ether was unhappy face what does that mean sir oh he... oh okay uh, we thought you were AWOL, says Miss Moose, and he says, no, his ether was unhappy-faced. So, hmm, I guess that breaks down to the internet world was out of his reach for a moment, and now he's there. Well, now I'm finished, so. What do we got going on? What day is it? Saturday. Uh, tomorrow, I guess there's, unless Vinny comes on and does something, uh, out of the blue. I've got mold in my old one. Having to deep clean everything before it comes in. Mr. Vincenzo on the upgrade of his living experience. Because, hey Vinny. Because uh, Vince is moving up in the world and settling down in his own place. And he's in the process of getting his shit together. And sometimes it takes time. There you go. You can't make people do work that they're not available to do. You can wait until they show up. No, it says no. I guess that means no, he ain't doing a show. I don't know what else. Not today. That's it. He couldn't get onto the internet to do a show. Well, maybe uh, next time, Mr. Vincenzo. And uh, where was I? Hmm. When, when, oh, with you wouldn't would uh, would have been good all day. I have no idea. He's talking in code on the RLM chat. I cannot understand him. He's just lost his mind. Anyway, what was I saying? Oh yeah, it, he's not going to do anything. But tomorrow we have Grimner doing probably the blues. He puts on his blues in the afternoon time, and then after a while. We have some blues, and then later on, Mr. Lightning Fingers Trivia plays trivia. And, man, the guy's hard to beat. I try. Hey, I'm not a complete wuss. Sometimes I give up and go play other games. But, <laughs> but I, I give the trivia a whirl because uh, eh, I like trivia sometimes. And uh, what else? Then we got after the trivia. Then you got Hal Anthony behind the woodshed. And Hal... Hal Anthony is the legal, he takes the legal road, you know, the law, and understands all that stuff, and some of us don't understand it as easily as he does. 
or in my case, can't really apply it next week. Okay, Vinny says he's doing radio next week, I think. He's talking in two words at a time. Anyway, uh, I don't believe there's anybody after Hal Anthony and uh, I if I guess uh, what was it Tuesday night I did something. Uh, we'll see how the schedule looks with Circle. And provided she has an early morning a following day, I can arrange a I can arrange the schedule around and do a late night show. I don't know if the late night even matters. I mean, I'll just talk to Grim about that and see if the hours matter. You just put it on a certain time. I don't know. Night, day, maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe it does. Who is to know until they ask? And uh, I'm not one to think I know a lot of shit, by the way, people. You know, I have a lot of opinions and... Uh, Excuse me. You know, and I have a lot of um, links and history to go through and people's opinions. But I've also got my own. And the way that I was, um, how my thinking developed doesn't seem to be the same as everybody else. It was done in a, in, in a different fashion. I had a lot of uh, individual help from my parents when I was really, really young. But it didn't. It didn't stick. Uh, my dad, he started out doing, you know, teaching me these things, and at, at some point, he wasn't as good of a, a reader, sadly to say. It's what you know kept him out of the the upper class of the workforce. Was he felt his reading skills weren't as good, so he, he was slower, and I surpassed him at an, an amazing age, and he worked with me for years and then at when I was about seven or eight it's it ended and uh I don't know can't explain it I I don't have uh ability to I don't think to remember enough of the detail to make any any more sense of it than that then it happened for a while and then it ended and there you go because in life you're always on your own you, even if you got partners there's times where I don't know. You just lean on your partner, <laughs> drag your partner down with you. <laughs> what? What? Hey, what would you call it, sir? You know. There you go. But see, that's what a partner does. You know. If, uh, but we haven't gotten to that. Well, I don't think we'll we'll devolve into regression. But to not ever believe it's possible is. Uh, kind of pompous because things go wrong when you get cocky i'll end it with this at 50 you know we're at 57 i'll try to do the two hours but i think when i get too cocky about something that's when it starts to disintegrate you know as long as it, uh you respect <laughs> respect life and life respects you back and when you get out of pocket well you're gonna get your ass handed to you somehow or another and then there's just Shitty things happen in life because the system is shitty. Uh, I'll go back into that. I'll try to remember I said that closing here. And I'll go back into that if uh, to maybe Monday or Tuesday. We'll see what Cirque says. Because, you know, she's the boss and she tells me when I can do radio. <laughs> right, honey? <laughs> anyway, thank you. Thanks, uh, thanks to you guys for uh, playing along. And I know I always get moose... Uh, I always get moose upset with the way I say certain things, but I we're all trapped at some level. I'll close with this one. And you just got to make your prison as comfortable for you as you possibly can. And I think I've just made mine so comfortable that I don't see it anymore. I know it's there, but I don't see it. And as long as out of my, you know out of sight, I'm a blind man without my glasses can't see shit. So out of sight, out of mind, you know. <laughs> and if life is so easy for me that all I got to do is just look for good shit and be satisfied with what I get, then that's not that difficult. And I don't know. Maybe I've been hanging around with Miss Mary too much, and I'm just satisfied. Uh, I'm I'm on one of those people that's 
easily satisfied. <laughs> right, honey? I'm easily satisfied. Right, baby? <laughs> See? Even my wife agrees with me. And, uh, hey, they're doing computer lingo on the RLM chat. I'll tell you another thing. If you guys ever have a problem, the best place to go for help is the RLM chat and tell some, one of the nerds. They got nerd geek dorks in the RLM that know the internet stuff real good. And if you put up an SOS, somebody will rescue you. Oh, hey, that's okay, Vinny. Anyway, I'm done. Thank you. And no, no problem. Uh, I'm over my jitters. I can do this alone. Now, now it's getting me to quit before the two hours is up. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. You guys have a nice day. Bye.